You are now listening to the J Ports Experience. Listen free on iTunes or at theandydareshow.com. Now, here's Jay. Yo, what is the word, people? Welcome to another action packed edition of the J Ports Experience. Coming to you live from the poorhouse, from the sexless dungeon of horrors, from the place where I will die alone. With me behind the glass, making sure this is a well-oiled podcast machine every week, helping me out, is nobody. Gonna gonna hit a lot of opposite ends of the spectrum today. But first, I want to get into I want to get into this. I'm just gonna dive in here. Just gonna just gonna go. Now, I don't know if you heard, but they're bringing Jerry Garcia back alive. Jerry Garcia is going to be dug up from his grave and be resurrected in order to front the Grateful Dead when they play their final their final shows. At Soldier Field. What? No? Oh, I'm... Okay. Um... The, apparently there's been a change. Jerry Garcia is not going to be coming back to life. So those Grateful Dead shows at Soldier Field are just... The dead shows, aren't they? I'm so sick of this whole... I was reading a lot of quotes... Now, if, in case you haven't heard... The surviving, the last four members of the Grateful Dead, Bob Weir, Phil Lesh, Mickey Hart, and Bill Kreutzmann, Kreutzmann? Kreutzmann? You know what I mean. Uh, the four of them are going to get together, and they're going to play a, a string of shows at Soldier Field in Chicago. Me and Andy can go check them out. Um, and the, fronting the band... You know, besides Bob Weir, who fronts the band half the song, uh, is going to be Trey Anastasio from Fish. And coming along for the tour is going to be Bruce Hornsby on keyboards and vocals. He toured with he toured with them in the nineties. Uh, okay, so here's my beef. This is actually, you know what my beef is, because I had the same beef when they were talking about, let's watch Nirvana play at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I ain't see Kurt Cobain anywhere. I'm all for if if a primary songwriter and lead singer wants to keep the band name and have a revolving member, a revolving cast of members i mean that that, that's where i draw the line we're not gonna we're gonna have two of the key not one we're not gonna the lead singer songwriter and the what you think of when you think grateful dead jerry garcia he's dead also a lot of people everyone's forgetting about ron pigben mckernan you know everyone's forgetting about pigpen pigpen toured with the grateful dead from 1965 until 1972, when he joined the 27 Club. He did uh, keyboards, harmonica, percussion, and vocals. A lot of people will tell you, a lot of people will tell you that they stopped, uh, they stopped listening to the Great, not stopped listening to the Grateful Dead, but they were over the Grateful Dead after Pigpen died. He had succumbed to Crohn's disease. And here I thought he was, died of a drug overdose. Anyway. Pigpen is a founding member of the Grateful Dead. And uh, he contributed the blues element to the group. And his um, Easy Wind, Good Morning Little Schoolgirl, and his trademark song, Turn Your Love On. Turn on your love light, a Bobby Bland cover. And he is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with the rest of the members of the Grateful Dead. Now, I'm not... This isn't like when Lord fronted Nirvana. 
you know, nobody's saying that. Tr I think it's great that Trey Anastasio is going to play with the surviving members of the Grateful Dead. I think it's awesome. That's probably his lifelong dream, and I think that's great. Good for him. Go, go Trey. Go Trey. Is that why Fish is going to have a much quieter 2015? Because you're going to be bringing the Grateful Dead back? First of all, they already continued to. First of all, the band continuing to tour after Jerry Garcia dies, calling themselves the dead, that's a little presumptuous. And you read the quotes, and it's like, I think it was Mickey Hart, and he said, uh, you know, it's good that we're finally going to put Ed a new chapter, put a final chapter in this book final chapter how can you write a chapter how can you finish a book how can you add a new chapter to a book that was finished in 1995 how does that happen how does that happen and i thought you know i thought i wouldn't be the only one thinking this i thought everybody would be with me but trending on twitter today is dead 50 hashtag dead 50 Everybody's sending in their ticket requests. The people seeing this version of the Grateful Dead weren't old enough to enjoy the real Grateful Dead. And, again, I wasn't there. I'm not going to pretend that I was at those shows at the Fillmore East and at the Fillmore in San Francisco. I wasn't there. And to be honest, I'm not even that well-versed on it. But I do know one thing. All the old school deadheads who I talk to, they stopped seeing the Grateful Dead in like 1973. The people going to Soldier Field are the pe like, you know who they are? They're, in 1995 I went to summer camp and I remember that my camp counselors reacted to Jerry Garcia dying and they were very upset about it. They were like, oh man, Jerry Garcia died. Thinking like, these guys are like 14 years old. What were they, 15 years old? So, how many dead shows could they have been to? Zero? One? And they were so torn up about it. People who saw The Grateful Dead in the 90s and are going to go see The Grateful Dead, uh, the, what they're billing as The Grateful Dead, they're like the people who get into fish in the year 2012. It's over. You missed out. You weren't there. So you can't claim that you were there the whole time. I'm sorry. This is not the Grateful Dead. And you know what's great? It's not the Grateful Dead. And out of the four members that are surviving, two of them are drummers. Have fun with that. Because if I know anything, I know, oh, it's so easy to, to work a band with two drummers. That's not complicated at all. Said no one ever. So the Grateful Dead going to play Soldier Field. And again, my only beef is that Jerry Garcia is not alive. And Pigpen. I'm not upset. There are some people that haven't heard of Trey Anastasio. There are people that don't know who Fish is, who Fish are, what they are. And people are like, who is this guy? They could have got this person to front the band. They could have got this person to front the band. They could have got this person to front the band. Bob Weir sings half the songs. They already got one. Oh, my Lord. Soldier Field. Two thousand This year. I, it's got to be this year, right? Fare the Well Tour. The Fare the Well. That's what they're calling it. Celebrating 50 years of the Grateful Dead. At Soldier Field, July 3rd, 4th, and 5th. You can go to dead50.net. You can still tell they're old because they got the .net. They can't even rock out with the .com. But um, this this article from Relix, and I, I love the people at Relix, so I'm, I got no beefs with them, but besides the headline that says, Grateful Dead's core four to reunite for final shows. That's like that's like having a Yankees core four without Derek Jeter. These aren't the 
How is the lead singer not in? How is the frontman not in the core four? That's like saying he's not an important part of this band. And I just want to point out, like, my my dad's a huge deadhead. He's seen The Grateful Dead a hundred times. If I said, Dad, have you seen The Grateful Dead a hundred times? He'd say, more than a hundred. That's what he would say. I promise you that. Zero times after 1972. Zero times. Maybe one. They were all, it was, it was done by then. Everyone's got this, everyone's so, I mean, listen, I'm a nostalgia guy too, but come on now. It's a little much. It's a little much. At least pull out a Jerry Garcia hologram or something. Damn. I wonder how much these tickets are. Well, you know what? Not uh, no. Here's a quote. Jerry Garcia was a great American master, and the Grateful Dead are not just a genuine piece of musical history, but also an important part of American history, said Anast- Trey Anastasio. This is a band born right at the beginning of electric rock that took the American tradition and moved it forward. They really embodied the American concept of freedom, rolling around the country with a ginormous gang of people and the mindset that you can come if you want. You can leave if you want. We don't know what's going to happen. All we know is that we're not looking back. What could be more American? I don't know. Apple pie and baseball and Chevrolet, Trey. I don't know. What do you want me to say? Somebody was saying, you know, why didn't they get Dean Ween to front (laughs) the great... I love Dean Ween, but what? Where'd that come from? I know they jam, too. The guy from Umphreys McGee wasn't available. They're too busy writing the theme song for Around the Horn. Yeah, and there's a a little video, because why wouldn't you want a video? Why wouldn't you want a video? So, Grateful Dead, minus Pigpen, minus Jerry Garcia, going to play three shows in September. And you know what bothers me? You know what really bothers me is that the Wikipedia page is already updated to have Trey Anastasio as a member in 2015. May 92 to 95, Jerry Garcia, Bob Weir, Vince Welnick, Phil Lesh, Bob Kurtzman, Bill Kurtzman, sorry, and uh, Mickey Hart, and... Oh, and then that's the continuation, 2015. It's the core four with... Jeff Chimitty? Where's he from? He's from the Dead, Further, Rat Dog. He's from the post Grateful Dead band. All right, anyway. So, members of the Grateful Dead gonna reunite and they're gonna play Soldier Field with Trey Anastasio from Fish and Bruce Hornsby on Horns. Wait, Bruce Hornsby on Horns? No, he's on keyboards and vocals. Because if Bruce Hornsby was on horns, that would be too awesome. Like, when your name is Hornsby, don't you think you learn how to play the trumpet? Maybe? Okay. Something else was... You want to talk about opposite ends of the spectrum. We're going Grateful Dead. (laughs) We went Grateful Dead here. And now I'm going to move it all the way over here to New York's uh, number one hip hop radio station that's uh, Hot 97, blazing hip hop and R and B. Uh, okay, so do you guys know who Funkmaster Flex is? Funkmaster Flex is a DJ. He's a DJ on Hot 97. He's also a D- I, he DJ. I'm, he's got shows all over the country. Whatever in Maryland, whatever their Hot 97, whatever version of Hot 97 they have there, he does an hour there. I'm, He's all over the place. Funkmaster Flex, worldwide, whatever. DJ. World renowned. He was the one, he was the first, when when Jay-Z and Nas were dissing each other years ago, uh, Funkmaster Flex was the one who had 
Ether. He had Nas's Ether, and he played it for the first time. And I remember, I remember him, uh, you know, dropping one of those bombs. He's always dropping bombs, and um, I remember him saying, "Listen, I did not run this bass management, so after I play this, if you don't hear me for a few weeks, you know why." That's pretty ballsy of him to do. I haven't listened to the radio in years. But the other day I'm on Twitter, and I see that people are mentioning Funkman. They're saying that Flex is going on a rant right now. So I tuned in. Not tuned in, but I, I got the um the transcript from it. Because I just had to see. I had to see what Flex was saying. I had to see what Flex was all about. So I'm reading this, and it says radio host Funkmaster Flex has reunited, reignited his feud with Jay-Z through an epic on-air tirade threatening to ruin the rapper's career. Quote, I let you live in this town. Don't think I can't ruin you, Flex said, because that's a nice feather in my cap if I ruin you. Today we bumpin' heads. Your site's trash. Referring to his website, Life Plus Times. Flex claims when he released his uh, DJ Funkmaster Flex app, a writer from Jay-Z's website interviewed him about development, digital development, but when the story came out, it didn't feature any of those details. The DJ believes those details were omitted because they were incorporated into Jay-Z's own Magna Carta Holy Grail Super Duper Samsung app. I added the Super Duper. The 47-year-old states that when he received a second interview request from Life and Times, centered around his involvement with the latest Dipset reunion, he could no longer stay silent. Dipset were once Jay-Z's biggest music rival. Quote, You want to know how we moving? And what's the next move? I know it. I'm not stupid. Y'all played me with that app already, and I figured that out. But I let y'all slide, and y'all took what I said for what I'm, for I'm soft. That's why I'm dealing with you today. Flex continued on. Flex is anyone. Um, it's two th- in 2015, you're a commercial corporate rapper that drops a little catchphrase every three months. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's super dope. Don't talk to me funny in the text, bruh. I don't work for you. Now keep that in mind for one second. Keep that I don't work for you line in mind for a second as I keep reading. More quotes. Don't ever capitalize your name on my phone no more, bro. He was that, trending on Twitter was hashtag this is hove because he texted <laughs> Jay Z hit Funkmaster Flex like this is hove. <laughs> this is hove, man. We're not scared of you. This radio station doesn't need you or care. Actually, the whole now remember all this. Remember that I'm saying all this. Actually, the whole company doesn't need you. You can't call the bosses like you do other things. Stop having people call me. It's nonsense. I'm not picking up. And I don't have anything to say because I don't want to talk to you. That's it. Now, a lot of people are saying this. A lot of people, well, there's a people listening right now that are saying, who the fuck is Funkmaster Flex? With good reason. With good reason. Flex, you're a DJ. Jay-Z makes music. You play music. That's the whole, there are people that serve the food and there are people that eat the food. You know, It's the same thing. But let's go back to this. Don't talk funny to me in the text. I don't work for you. Okay. Now, if you typed Hot 97 into Google, the first thing that comes up is Jay Z is reportedly part of a group of negotiations to purchase Hot Ni- New York radio station Hot 97. Flex? You're about. He is about to be working. You are about to be working for Jay-Z. Any second now, you're about to be working for Jay-Z. This is Hove. He's about to be your boss, bro. We're not scared. Let's go back. This radio station doesn't need you or care. Yet. You're about to be bought. In 2015, you're a commercial corporate rapper. That's cool. That's cool, Flex. But 
you've been a commercial corporate DJ since you were invented. Since you came out, that was you. I mean, like 2003, this motherfucker had the Funk Flex driving shoe. Now, let me ask you a question. You need a special shoe to drive? I don't get it. So, Funk Flex... Funk Master Flex is tight. That Jay-Z... So, apparently, he thinks that Jay-Z stole his his ideas and used them for his Magna Carta app. I don't think Funkmaster Flex released an album on a phone. So, whatever, oh my, whatever innocuous details he may have used, he didn't get them from you. Trust me. Trust me, Flex. Flex did the same thing a couple of years ago with this guy, Low Key, who runs YouHeardThatNew.com. He started tweeting at him like, you ain't digital, bro. Like, Flex, you're 47 years old. Bye. Like, you're still relevant? I I only know, the only reason we still know that Funkmaster Flex is on the radio, because every now and then he goes on a rant. A couple of, two years ago, to get himself relevant, him and DJ Clue. DJ Clue is on... Power 105 here in New York City, they fucking went back and forth. They were like beefing. Yeah, DJs beefing. Sure. Sure, I believe that. That just like I believe that, you know, on wrestling, they really hit the person with the chair. On WWE wrestling. Resistance Pro, they might actually be hitting each other with the chair. I I don't know. I have not been up close and personal, but. I mean, come on. I mean, come on now. Flex, you ain't relevant. You know what Funkmaster Flex should have done? Funkmaster Flex should have gone with Howard Stern and got a channel on Sirius, and then he can just count his money. See, because when you, when you have your own channel on Sirius, you don't have to come on the radio every single day and hype yourself up. You don't have to come on the radio every single day and think of new ways to get people to listen. Sirius pays you, and that's it. They pay you, and you do what you want. He's coming out with the driving shoe. Funkmaster Flex is like that dad that gets a skin fade, like when tape-ups are in. He's like the dad that wants to be in. He wants to be cool. I'll hang out with you guys. He's like, he's like that uncle that'll buy you beer when you're 14 years old, just if you think he's cool. And I got, he's not cool. Not cool anymore. I told you the one, the, the one time Flex was cool was when he played Ether. That was pretty rad of him. Other than that, I don't know anything. I, I don't know where he cut his teeth. I don't know what he's about. First of all, if you're a, you're a DJ, you're supposed to be biased. You're supposed to be playing, you know, equal amounts of music from each artist but yet you're involved in a Dipset reunion, that's going to lead me to believe that you might spin their record a few more times on the radio. But th- then again, the ra- this is, radio is a dead medium. This is why radio is not going to exist in a few years. In fact, it barely exists now. Yeah, I only turn on the radio for sports. I didn't turn on the radio for sports and Mike Francesa. We're going to get to the headlines and the emails when we come back after this. Hey, everybody. This is Andy from the Andy Dare Show. Just thanking you for checking out the Jay Porks experience. If you want to learn more about Jay, follow him on Twitter at Jay Porks. Follow him on Instagram at Jay Porks. Uh, JayPorks.com for the podcast, articles, pictures, you name it. There's a running theme here. It's Jay Porks. So for 2015, if you want to support the Dare Podcast Network, all you got to do is go to theandydareshow.com and click on the Amazon banner, and you will be tipping your cap to the Jay Porks experience and all the fine broadcasting here at Dare Network. Thanks for listening.
And back to the Jay Porks experience. And we are back. I just wanted to, uh, as I, I had the mic, the volume on, I can't hear myself talk. Um, I, If you're going to see the Fare Thee Well Grateful Dead shows, I, I'm not like mad at you for that. You're allowed to enjoy it, and I'm just, they shouldn't call it the Grateful Dead show. They shouldn't, it shouldn't be billed as the Grateful Dead. It's not a part of the book that's titled Grateful Dead. It's not a chapter. It's not. That's it. Let's get to some headlines. Powered by Annie Quiet. The Black Clo- Ah, wow. The Black Crows broke up. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the Black Crows are still together? Well, not anymore. So, that guy's hairstyle... It's not going to be... Is not going to be, uh, we're not going to be seeing any more weirdness out of that. Um, and a cool tour. Wiz Khalifa and Fallout Boy hitting the road together. How rad is that? This is, that's all I want with life. I want weed smoking rappers going on tour with bands that are almost rock bands. Wiz Khalifa, Fallout Boy. A couple of years ago, I saw Snoop in 311. That's cool. Like, can Snoop go on tour with, like, Cypress Hill and Sublime? That would be awesome to me. So when I saw that, I was like, they're definitely hitting PNC. And they are. That tour looks fucking cool. I don't think I know one Wiz Khalifa song, and I would totally enjoy myself there. I would totally enjoy myself. There would be not a second of me not enjoying myself. Get me on the lawn, PNC, some herb blowing. Can't beat it. Even if you tried to beat it, you could not. Have you guys seen the latest t-shirt craze? Oh, yeah. There's t-shirts with uh, Kurt Cobain's suicide note. Uh screen grabbed on it so like you know if you wanted to hear the last if you wanted to read the words of a dying man in pain just go to any hipster and he'll be wearing the Kurt Cobain suicide note shirt seriously some people should die some people should just like when you see them walking down the street you should just be able to say okay we're going to harvest your organs to people who need them, and you're just no longer going to be taking up space on this earth anymore. Who comes up with these things? I'm going to put a suicide note on my t-shirt. I get looked at if I see the word, if I have the word fuck on my t-shirt. More festivals got announced. We had Bonnaroo. And if you're wondering, like, hey, Jay, I want to know where I can get all these festival posters in one place. I got it for you. It's jporks.com. Because on the show notes from last week, I have added. I've got Coachella, which I spoke about last week. I've got Bottle Rock, which I spoke about last week. Governor's Ball, which I spoke about last week. Bonnaroo. After much dialing of hotlines, your 2015 Bonnaroo lineup is Billy Joel, Mumford & Sons, Dead Mouse, and Kendrick Lamar. Florence and the Machine, Robert Plant, My Morning Jacket, Alabama Shakes, and Childish Gambino. Can I just say I have no... I mean, I know this was... I know last year I was like Elton John on a farm. What are you doing with that? Same thing with Billy Joel. The thing about Billy Joel is that he's the one who wrote the song Only the Good Die Young and he's still living. Oh, I said that out loud. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's the franchise at the Garden. Billy Joel can play Madison Square Garden whenever he wants. And if that ain't pretentious, I don't know what is. Also, um... 
what is this called in Boston? Boston Calling. I was going to call it Bean Town Calling. Boston Calling has a, a slightly smaller lineup, but still packs a powerful punch. Beck, Pixies, My Morning Jacket, Ben Harper, Tenacious D, Tame and Paula, St. Vincent, TV on the radio. Run the Jewels, Sharon Van Eaton. Pretty good. Shaky Knees Festival, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. We've got Social D. Bands I'd see on this bill include Social D, Pixies, Ryan Adams, Noel Gallagher, Mastodon, TV on the radio, Kaiser Chiefs, and Mac DeMarco of Salad Days. It's funny, because if you remove the top three bands from this lineup, I'd be way happier. And the top three bands would be The Strokes, The Avid Brothers, and Wilco. But then the next line is Pixies, Social D, Ryan Adams. The Strokes. Mountain Jam at Hunter Mountain, upstate New York. Black Keys, Robert Plant, Alabama Shakes, Government Mule, Grace Potter. <clears throat> Not bad. And uh, Maverick Music Festival in it's La Vita. I, I have no idea. I have no idea where this is. Maverick Music Festival. Anyway, it's got Cypress Hill Cake, Toadies, and Tune Yards. Two day passes at sixty bucks. I am call me in for that one. Big Guava announced in Tampa. They've got Pixies, Ryan Adams, TV on the radio, Run the Jewels, Jenny, Lu Jenny Lewis. Hosier. Fuck that guy. So, yeah, so um, on last week's show notes, I've got festival posters, and whenever a festival is announced and they have a poster, I will added here so it's going to be a big a big thing a big page of festival lineups is what i was going to say it's all festival culture man it's crazy like a lot and last week i mentioned some of this a lot of people like coachella People go there for the experience, so people bu people buy their tickets before they even hear the announcement, and it's the same thing with Bonnaroo. For me, I'm the kind of guy, I need the festival to be crazy good for me to even consider wanting to go. Festivals bother me. I don't want to be at a concert in the daytime. Concerts to me, I mean, listen, as much as you hear me complain about how I like to get home early, seeing a band like Ghost at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when I am just woke up and I'm still wiping the coal out of my eyes doesn't do much for me. And it doesn't really make, I mean, they were awesome, but some bands, some bands when you see them on a, on a, on a side stage at a festival, it's not the same experience. As if you saw them play their own headlining gig at a amphitheater or at a indoor venue or a stadium or whatever. These odd daytime sets. And this, I mean, with most of these festivals, there's too many hits. There's too many misses and not enough hits. Like, for instance, I'm looking at this Maverick. This Maverick Music Festival here. They've got four names listed. But out of the four names, I love, not like, love three of them. <coughs> I love Cypress Hill, love Cake, love the Toadies. And I love Cypress Hill even more now as I grow older and older as a, as a weed burner. I just so appreciate Be Real and, and everything he does for the, for the marijuana community. But like, I would love that. But if, give me a, give me a festival like, see, even Shaky Knees. Shaky Knees Festival, it's three days. I'd see Social D, Pixies, Ryan Adams, Noel Gallagher, Mastodon TV on the radio, Kaiser Chiefs, Mac DeMarco. 
that's one, two. My bad, almost died. So like, Shaking Knees Festival, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have eight acts that I would see over a three-day span. Over a three-day span in the summertime, I can see if I saw two concerts. Three. If I saw three concerts in three days, I have a better chance. Of, I have a chance of seeing more bands that I enjoy than going to Shaky Knees Festival and walking around in the summertime and sweating my ass off. And the thing about be. I don't plan my wardrobe for all day. Like, I got hair. I don't plan for that all day. So, like, if I'm out at 2 o'clock and I get dressed for 2 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, I'm going to be looking a lot different. Hair's going to be down. It's going to fall in a place where I don't want it to fall. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look a lot sloppier than I did at, at 2 o'clock. And the whole festival culture, man. And the, with these metal gates, that, this is the thing with, with um, festivals too. It's like, okay, you can buy your ticket and you can get in. But if you pay an extra $250, we'll put you in the VIP section. And what the VIP section is, is it's just you're down front and they put a gate around you so the people who paid regular price aren't allowed in. To that little section that you're allowed into. It was like that at Orion Music and more. It was like that at the uh, at the main at the main Orion stage. Because when Ghost was playing, there was like 13 people taking up a 300 square foot VIP section, and it continues this year. Class barricade welfare. That went. Yeah, that's what this is. It's every every festival's trying to find a way to make that extra buck. Where in reality, like for instance, I'll give you an example. It's not a festival, but it still works. PNC Bank Art Center has a lawn. They have a pit, and between they have seats. In Washington, the Gorge Amphitheater is. A big a lawn like the size of a fo two football fields. Then they have at the bottom they have cement. It turns into a pit when it gets hectic later on. And that whole area, that whole venue, is one price general admission. People don't always want to pay extra money to get closer. You're, you're, you're pricing them out. Like, as much as I love this artist, that artist, as much as I love an artist, like, if I have a choice between paying $25 and not having that good seats or paying $70 and having slightly better seats, I'd rather just pay the 25 and sneak past security like I always do. Every time. I gotta tell you, the whole tri-state tri area needs its... Needs its concert venues redone. Because this is the most magical place, allegedly, the greatest city in the world. And yet, I'm, I got no shows on deck. I actually could have been at Papa Roach and Seether tonight at Terminal 5, but... I can't... I, Tuesday is... I work Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Believe it or not, Tuesday is my best day. I can't afford to give Tuesday up. So even if it was the meat puppets, I couldn't go. But I got emailed if I wanted to see Papa Roach and Caesar. I thought that was nice that people think I'm uh that people are still thinking of me as a journalist. I think that's awesome and incredible. Incredible. What else is going on? Oh, let's get to the, uh... Wanna read some emails? Alright. 
every week, as you know, every week you can get into the podcast by writing an email to jporkspodcast at gmail dot com. You can these emails could be about whatever you want them to be about. I gave no I gave no indication on what I would like them to be about. You just send me whatever you want. If it's I would assume that it has something to do with music, but then again when I assume things we know what happens. So the email portion, the email segment of our show, sponsored by Christ, I can't find it. The hell with it. All right, let's read these. I I don't read them before before the podcast because I like to be surprised. Okay. You no. Oh. <laughs> this one's no subject, so I opened it. You don't know shit. And that comes from Nate. Okay. Thanks, Nate. Thank you for that. Let's go to the next one here. Is Roomba? Oh, it's a fucking spam. Hi, would you like to see pictures of me? Come meet me at tinyurl.this.that slash and sign up and just give me your credit card number. That's not what it actually says, but it's something to the effect of trying to get me to sign up for some cam website that I'm not interested in. I don't do webcams. Just, just letting you know, if there are any spam bots out there that want me to webcam with them, it ain't happening. I don't webcam. I hate that. I didn't lose 115 pounds so I can get a, get on a fucking, get on a webcam and have my fucking whole body wide. Need that. Fuck that. This one's from Dale. And it's it's just a picture of a penis. All right, you know what? I'm I'm done with this. <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need to know you for now on to send an email. That's what happens. I should have known that when you put your email on the internet, you're only asking for trouble. And that you know what? I asked for it. I asked for it. I asked for that guy to tell me I don't know shit, and I asked for that other guy to send me a picture of his penis because that's what I love. Love seeing pictures of penises when I'm trying to record my podcast. Oh boy! Here, see, I thought that so, like I would be talking. See, the idea is is that I do the podcast, and the idea is that if I do it for an hour, maybe I can get 20 minutes of of answering questions from you guys in there. But not this week, I won't. Not this week. Okay, so jporkspodcast at gmail.com. Send me an email. Music news, whatever it is, besides pictures of penises. I know last week I said send nude pics. I meant girls. I meant girls. What else is going on today in the week of music? Oh, Weird Al. Weird Al and, um... Weird Al is going to embark on a 82 date. Is it 82 dates? He's hitting over 100 cities. Not one of them being New York City. Besides... Besides Governor's Ball. Which... Last week I said uh, Weird Al could headline Governor's Ball. I said, I don't know. And I, then I said, I hope he plays in the city. And that's not the case. He's just going to be here on the 6th for that day. And the Decemberists also have tour dates. And also, we've got new music. There's a new Modest Mouse video. The song is called Coyotes. The the video is a coyote on an empty subway, and it's pretty cute. The song sounds like 
most other Modest Mouse tunes. So it's kind of cool at the same time where it puts you to sleep. Also, there's a new Smashing Pumpkins video for this song, Being Beige, off their monuments to an allergy of an allergy. EP. Meanwhile, meanwhile, no, really, like, meanwhile, uh, how can I forget box? So at the dead, there was a Dead Kennedy show on Thursday night, and there was a girl receiving um, fellatio on stage. There was a guy snacking on some, snacking on her snatch at the Dead Kennedy show. As the white kids say. I certainly can't think of anything more punk rock than that. And they've cropped out her face in the image at Jezebel.com. Uh, all I got, I mean, listen, I'm all about, I don't really care if you want to do that, do that, that's fine. But, um, you know, my, my thing is oral sex usually happens in the bedroom. Call me, you know. Say what you want about me. I, I must be a romantic. But, you know, when when a band is playing, I don't see how... I mean, if that was me... Man, I don't even... How can I even attack this in a place, in a way where I won't seem like an asshole? Okay, well, here's, you know what? I would have to turn down the fellatio while the music was playing. And I know none of you believe me, but I would. I would. I got a job to do. Now, th this person doesn't. This person's just a fan. Go, go get your box eaten. Enjoy it. Have fun. Now, when I'm at shows, why aren't there... There's no flying box. There's no girls like, hey, you. would you like to... Are you hungry? Would you like to snack on my snatch? That never happened to me. Never. It's weird, I know. It's crazy. It's like now next time I go to a show, I'm be looking around like, okay. Who's looking tasty? What girls are looking tasty here tonight? Not to be confused with Tasty from Orange is the New Black. She is not tasty at all. Okay. Well, before I get up on out of here, because I'm... Fucking stupid work. Let me give you the list of websites you need to go to to help keep me in business. There's ConcertConfessions.com. That's for all your live music news and reviews. For the fans. By the fans. We're going to have action. It's going to be action-packed in 2015. Once the ball gets rolling, the ball starts knocking pins over. Trust me. Just bear with me. January is bad. We're going to get through it together. You can also go to hang the DJ ChristinaRocks.com. ChristinaRocks.com, no H. She has a website called Hang the DJ. It's 89xradio.com on Sunday mornings for the time warp, 8 to noon. I hated working last Sunday, but the only good thing I got out of it was I got to wake up and listen to Christina Rock. Also, um, she's discovered Facebook. I know. Welcome to 2003. But uh, you can like 89X Time Warp on Facebook. And if you want to take, uh, take a survey here, her she has about 1,100 likes. And the Jay Porks p Facebook page, which you can go like, has 100 likes. 100. And if, you, if you're the... I said the hundredth like gets a free T-shirt, and that's true. So whoever wants to come forward and say that they liked it for the hundredth time, because I can't tell, I will send you a free 
absolutely free. Jayporks.com t-shirt. Also, I mean, you know what? Let's give some incentive. If you guys want to get in on the email segment, and if we actually come to a come to a place where I have a handful of email, real emails a day, not ones of pictures of penises and and you don't know shit. But if people actually email, and I could have like an email contest, and the best email can get a jporks.com t-shirt for free. Says on the front, your favorite band sucks. Jporks.com on the back. I mean, if you're interested in free stuff. If you're not, it's fine. Like I said, remember, I do this for me. I have fun doing this. I would like if you got in. It's okay if you don't. I can. I went an hour by myself. We've also got the Andy Derer Show dot com. I'm gonna try to pronounce it right for now. On in 2015, I'm gonna try to pronounce it right. The Andy Derer Show dot com for all your Derer Network podcast needs. Whether that is. The Tyler Kale Show, whether that's the flagship show, the Andy Deere Show, or whether that's the smooth, sultry tones of the J. Pork's experience, you can get that all at theandydeershow.com. Deer Network on Twitter, and of course, every week, the headlines be powered. Yeah, I said be powered. The headlines be powered by Annie Quiet. Till next week, folks. Whiskey, weed, and Warren Zevon. Late. This has been the Jay Parks Experience. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>